Hello, Maxtivity artists. It's great to have you here again. It's time to stop, drop, and art. Today, we're gonna to do a really fun project with construction paper, scissors, glue, and markers. Not really messy today. I know we've done a few messy projects. This one is not so messy. For those of you who don't like messy projects, I'm sure you'll be happy. Here is an example of what it might look like when we're done. This is one that my daughter made a long time ago. It's a snake in the grass. And it's actually three different pieces of paper that are glued together. The grass is one piece of paper, the background is another, and the snake is a third piece of paper. So I'm going to show you how to prepare each one and then you will cut out the pieces and glue them together should be fun. So you might have noticed that the background in that picture was blue. I looked through all my construction paper and I have no blue. So I decided we're gonna have a pink sky. Maybe it's a sunset or a sunrise. Sometimes the sky is pink. So this is gonna be my sky. I don't do anything to that. I don't cut this at all. Thankfully I had some green. Green is going to be our grass. And then I'm gonna use a light color. You could use white or yellow to be the body of the snake. So you'll need three different colors, something for your sky, green for your grass, and then a light color for your snake's body. So I'm going to draw the grass before I cut it out. And I want to start, let's start right in the middle. If this is a horizontal line going through our paper, let's try to find the center from top to bottom, right about here. And I'm gonna make a jagged point going up, just like that. Now, I don't wanna to make too many jagged points because I've gotta cut them out. I don't wanna make them super, super skinny and tall, but I'm gonna make some taller and some shorter, and maybe some skinnier and some wider. Variety makes it more interesting. I might have some curve off that way and some curve the other way. So sometimes I'm gonna go a little lower, sometimes a little higher, I'm just making some points all the way across the page. Kind of looks like monster teeth, doesn't it? Or stalactites or stalagmites or really skinny pointy mountains. But you just want them to go all the way across the page and you don't want them to come all the way down here because then you'll be cutting your grass in pieces and we want it to stay one big piece. So you don't want your lines to go down all the way to the bottom of the page. You wanna leave um, this paper intact so that when you cut out your grass, this is all one piece of grass. All right, we won't cut that out quite yet. Okay, now my snake. So we want our snake to be kind of an S-curve snake, but we want his head to be a little bit bigger than his body. So let's start. You know what you could do is you could draw a triangle for the head with a pencil. All right, it is farther from this corner of the paper to this corner than it is from this side to this side. So if I want my snake to be nice and long, I might draw him from this corner to this corner. So this corner is gonna help me with the head because this is kind of a triangle already. I'm gonna draw kind of a triangle in this corner. And then I'm going to put a curve right there and a curve 
curve here and a curve here. Can you see that? I just put a curve in all the corners of my triangle to make kind of a, looks like a Hershey's Kiss kind of. That's gonna be my snake's head. Now I don't want his body to be too much skinnier than his head. I'm gonna have his body start right about here and I'm gonna curve up and down and up and down to that other corner of the paper. Now I'm gonna draw a parallel line that starts on this side of his head and mirrors the other line. Once again, I don't want it to get too skinny until I get to the tail. Just kind of following that same, now I'm going to the tail. It's a pretty fat snake. All right, now I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna outline my snake. And I'm gonna make this a little more curved and maybe so that his neck isn't just such a tight line. I might curve it a little bit more. Make him a little skinnier. He was a little too fat, I think. Great, okay. Now I'm going to put some eyes on my snake. And I'm going to put stripes on my snake, designs. You can do whatever kind of design you want. got stripes. Maybe you want some stripes to be wide and some stripes to be thin. And you could make them all different colors. It's easier actually to color your snake before you cut him out. Once you cut him out, it, it's a little harder to color him. So why don't you go ahead now and color your snake with markers or crayons. It's up to you. I've got both. So you might make um, your snake bright colors. Bright colors on snakes are like a warning to other animals, aren't they? That they might be poisonous, so they should stay away. And sometimes snakes have bright colors, uh, just even though they're not poisonous, just to uh, kind of scare off predators. But I think a lot of times the really bright colored snakes um, might be poisonous. So notice when I color, I'm coloring in curves. I'm curving with the shape of my snake, making my crayon curve. I should have done that up here too. I guess I was just going too fast and didn't think about it, but it's best to color in the curve, the shape of the thing that you're coloring. It gives it more of that curved feel. I'm just gonna do the whole, all the big stripes orange. And let's see, I think I might leave those yellow, the stripes that are yellow, but I might make around his eyes, I think I'll do red. You can color a lot faster with crayons than you can with markers. And then what should this part be? Hmm, could just make it black. Give him a black nose and make this black. I'm using my marker for that part. And we will give him a tongue later. Now, if I had a gel pen, I could do a little white mark in his eyes. I think I might have a pastel white pencil around. Ooh, ooh, I do have a gel pen. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna give him a little shiny spot in his eye. Yeah, and maybe some little nostrils. All right, I'm ready to cut out my grass and my snake. So I'm gonna cut my grass out. And remember, I don't want to cut all the way down because I don't have pieces of grass. I want my grass to all stay in one big piece. 
and I'm turning. You have to move your, your paper around a lot when you're cutting things out. Or you could go like this. Whatever works for you. sidewalk. He was really cool. And then the next time I went, I saw him again in the same spot. And then I saw him a third time. I thought he just really, he must live nearby and he just really likes that spot on the sidewalk for sunbathing. He was very large. And then the third time I saw him, a bike was going by and the biker did not see the snake and ran right over the tip of its tail, just barely. And the snake jumped up and uh, I don't know if he was just surprised or if he was trying to bite the biker. I don't think the biker even noticed because the snake didn't actually get to bite the biker, but he jumped pretty high. I thought, wow, snakes are pretty amazing how they don't even have, they don't have legs or feet and yet they can jump into the air. Pretty amazing. They're just a big muscle, I guess. All right, you see that, how my grass is all one piece ready to go. Now my snake. Gonna cut out my snake. And we are going to weave the snake through the grass so that it looks like he's slithering in front and behind kind of gives it a 3D effect. So you're going to need a glue stick or, or some Elmer's glue in a bottle to glue your grass and your snake together. You, you don't need hot glue for this, just Elmer's or a glue stick will be fine. So here's my background and here's my grass. So I'm going to flip my grass over and I'm just going to put glue on this part. Okay, come on glue. <sighs> this always takes a while. I'm just going to do kind of a swirly swirly along the bottom of my grass. I'm not going to put glue up here yet because I want to be able to put my snake through. Just gonna do that, then I'm gonna flip it over and line it up with the bottom of my paper. It should fit just perfectly because the green paper and the pink paper came from the same package of construction paper, so they're the same size. So look at that, fit perfectly. I'm smoothing it out. All right, now my snake. Whoa, I made him too long. <laughs> Well, I guess he could be going off the page or he could be going. So I wanna put some of him in front of the grass and some of him behind the grass. Maybe like that. Maybe like that. You'll have to decide. You'll have to move your snake around, or I could put him this way, and I could put some of the snake behind. Hmm. Well, however you think you like your snake, however you think he looks good, position him in the grass with some of the grass behind and some in front. I'll do that. I'm gonna have him going a little bit off the page. That's kind of fun. 
And then I'm just, once I've got him where I want him, I'll put some glue on his head and I'll glue that down. And then put a little glue down here. I don't have to put glue on every single part of my snake. Just a few spots. Put some glue here. I did three spots, one here, one here, and one on the head. That'll get him to stick. And now my grass, I'll just put a little dot of glue on my blades of grass. Not all the way at the top, because I do want them to stick out a little bit. Just putting a little bit of glue about midway up each blade of grass. That one probably doesn't need it. Just to hold it on so it doesn't flop down. Cool. Now he needs a tongue. So I'm going to take a red Sharpie. I don't have a red Sharpie. I'm going to take a pink Sharpie. I'm going to make a snake tongue. Let's make a little S curve again, but make the end have a double point, so a forked tongue, that's what we call that. I want to make it a little bit longer than it needs to be so I can glue it on. I'm going to cut that out. You don't have to make a tongue for your snake if you don't want to. That's up to you. And you don't want your snake to be quite as long as mine is. I need mine a little too long for this paper. All right, get rid of those scraps. So I probably should have put the tongue on before I glued my snake's head down, but I forgot. So he's not, it's not dry yet. I'm just gonna stick this under there, right like that. He's going right off the page. <laughs> All right, so I've got my 3D snake here, kind of 3D. Uh, you can see that my daughter, when she made hers, her snake, she made him to fit on the page. And mine's going off the page a little bit, so it just depends on how you want your snake to be. So do any of you know the poem by Shel Silverstein called Boa Constrictor? It's one of my favorites. Oh, I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. A boa constrictor, a boa constrictor. I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor. And I don't like it very much. Oh no, he swallowed my toe. Oh gee, he's up to my knee. Oh fiddle, he swallowed my middle. Oh dread, he swallowed my... That was the short version. Have a great day.